Okay, today we're going to talk about collections. I probably get collections questions more than almost about anything else. And the sad thing about getting that question about collections is it's always easier to avoid the collection than it is to uh, collect on the collection. So we're going to talk about the number one and number two rules of collections right off the bat. And they are, number one, the best way to get nothing is to do nothing. That's right. A lot of landlords have people that move them, move out, owe them money, and they don't know anything about it. So the first rule of collections is everyone who owes you money, you need to put in what we call our pipeline. You need to assess damages and get collections started, turn them over to your collections company, or you'll never get anything guaranteed. Uh, if you start the process, you're likely to get something or a certain percentage at some point. Okay, the second rule of collections is you cannot get blood from turnips, so don't rent to turnips, okay? Turnips are renters who owe other landlords money, who've never had a good job, who have multiple collections, uh, and you should have known better than to rent to them in the first place. Uh, if you have those people leave owing you money, you're already at the back of the line. You're very unlikely to ever get any money. So if you follow those two rules, number one, if people do owe you money, start something. And number two, be careful up front not to rent to people who are just uncollectible. Your collections percentages will be much better. So let's talk about step one. Step one, have a solid screening process, which is A, have a good rental uh, application. You need to have an application that has uh, all of the space for tenants to put in their personal information, name, date of birth, social security number, jobs, emergency contact, bank accounts, all of those things, especially bank account, very important because you need that in the collection and the garnishing process. Number two, do a thorough background report. There are things on people's backgrounds that help us find them and do collections. The last addresses, the uh, accounts, there's just information on there that is very helpful. So have that in your file, a good background check. And then use a good lease. If you want to be successful at collections, you've got to have the right language in your contract. And the place to get that is from the Utah Apartment Association. Our residential rental agreement is uh, the best in Utah. Uh, it's written by attorneys that know what they're doing, that are focused on collection, have records of very high success rates in collection, so they know what they're doing. So make sure you use the UAA Residential Rental Agreement. Now let's go over to step two. Determine the dollar damages. So if somebody moves out, they did $5,000 damage. The first thing you need to do is credit their deposit to it. So a $1,000 deposit, they only owe you $4,000. Within 30 days, the law is, you need to send that letter to the tenant and say, hey Paul, you had a $1,000 deposit, but you owe me 5,000, you owed 5,000, we've taken the 1,000, now you still owe 4,000. Please pay immediately or we will vigorously pursue collections. So uh, that is the language that needs to be in your first letter. And if they don't respond or work out a payment plan or work out something, then you need to eventually turn that over to a collection company that you need to select. So when you're selecting a company, there are what we call collection agencies and there are collection attorneys and you get to pick which is best for you. One recommendation I have is that it seems to me that a judgment that is got uh, against the tenant in a court of law has more weight than just a collection. Judgments can be used to garnish wages. They can be used to garnish bank accounts. Um, everyone who runs their background check in the future will see that on there. And oftentimes they'll say, I won't rent to you until you pay so-and-so landlord off. So a judgment is much more powerful than just a collection, in my opinion. Okay, in conclusion, if you want to be good at collections, you need patience. Too many people uh, have a tenant and they're going right along in life. This is their trajectory and something happens. The uh, car breaks down, they get sick, they lose their job. Where does their trajectory go? Like this. And where do a lot of landlords think that they're gonna collect? A month after you evicted them when their trajectory is still going down. You're not gonna get a dime for months and months and months as they recover and within a year or two get a new job or get back on their feet or marry somebody that is uh, responsible. Then, two or three years down the road, uh, you can go after and you can collect. So be patient. The average rental collection takes three years. 
Second, 50% will never be found. Just write it off. It is what it is. But third, remember the pipeline, in order to ever get something out the end, you've got to put stuff in the beginning. So if you end up over your career having 10 people owe you money and you put all of them in the pipeline, you're likely to get a percentage of those out the end of the pipeline. So start, get it going. Thank you. If you have any questions, call the Apartment Association. Have a great day.